We began on Thursday with eight. We are down to the final two, a national championship on the line as the Tigers of East Texas Baptist University take on their former conference foe, the Blazers of Bellhaven. Glad to have you with us here in Marshall, Texas, beautiful Bell Park at Taylor Field, alongside Dr. Ian McMichael, I'm Kit McConico. Coach, the long season, the postseason, and now it is time to play for a national championship. Best of three series, game one today between these two foes who know each other oh so well. Both teams have the full package, great pitching, Heads up base running, good defense. It's going to come down to the wire. Former ASC members, they knew each other, and well, here is how it stacks up. This is the 26th all-time meeting. ETBU leads 15 victories, 10 losses. They had won four straight, had Bellhaven until their loss on Friday. They have gone four and eight in the last 12 meetings, has ETBU versus Bellhaven. In Marshall all-time, ETBU 10 in six. They lost to Bellhaven in the 2023 NCAA Regionals, lost to them the 2022 NCAA Regionals, and now we are ready for the winner take all championship series. ETBU, their second time in program history, making the national championship final. They won it back in 2010. This is the first ever trip to the championship, first ever opportunity for a title for the Blazers. They have been led all season long by the star pitcher, the 5'9 graduate student, the righty out of St. Francisville, Louisiana, Kennedy Carruth. She has been absolutely stellar. Carruth does such a great job. She spins the ball well, keeping the hitters off balance. What makes her so effective is that she has that changeup that she can throw in any count and interrupts those hitters' timing. Carruth has pitched every single pitch of the last 11 games. In fact, the last time she wasn't in the circle, she started back on May the 4th, exactly one month ago against Maryville. She was replaced after four and a third innings, but ever since, it has been number 1-8 in green in the circle, leading them here to their first ever national championship final. The All-American for ETBU, the four-time player of the year, the four-time All-ASC first team honoree, Maddox the shortstop, sends that to her opposite number. Stock still across in time. And here is how the Tigers will come to bat. You've already seen Tristan Maddox, the senior shortstop from Mission, Texas. Courtney White Cummings will follow. Haley Stum, Bell, and Loya in the middle. And then the bottom of the order with Morales, the first baseman, Navarrete, and Mary Frances Ellis rounding out the batting order. Avery Holland, the star freshman from Fredericksburg, Texas. We'll start in the circle for the Tigers. So Courtney White comes to the plate. Her first at bat for the second baseman. Quickly one up, one down. As White digs in, another senior out of Jonestown, just outside of Austin, a former Vista Ridge Ranger. White, three-time, three-year player, the transfer from Sam Houston State. Three-time All-American, three-time All-First Team ASC. Looking to wrap up her collegiate career with a national championship. Coach, we talk about for these seniors, this is what it all comes down to, the culmination of a career. This is what you are working day in and day out for. And it will either be the highest of highs or the lowest of lows as that is fouled off. One and two the count. Absolutely, these seniors are playing with everything that they have. Just understanding how much time and dedication they have put in to be in this moment and they want to make sure that they step up big time. Ruth has led the way, as we said. What a job she has done. One of the top pitchers in the country. Program making their first ever NCAA championship here in Division Three softball. We'll tell you more about them and the progress they've made in such a short time under 14th year head coach Kevin Griffin. First, we'll get you the defensive lineup for the Blazers. Caruth in the circle, her catcher Anna Kayemi behind the plate across the diamond from third to first. Allie Gordon on the hot corner. Sarah Stockstill is at short. Natalie Parker at second. Ellie Jones is in right. The outfield after the pitch. It'll be a full count to White. So in the outfield for Bellhaven, Mary Moore Weidmeyer is the left fielder. Maddie Miller is in center. And Jordan Knipe, the right fielder for the Blazers.
White draws the walk, worked the count full, and the Tigers with their first base runner. I love this at bat by White. Being aggressive early in the count, knowing that Karuf is going to come in with that first pitch strike, but also having the discipline to lay off pitches that are not in her zone. Now the third baseman steps up in the three hole, does the senior out of Houston from Summer Creek High School. Corn Cummings up to bat for the first time, facing Carruth in the ball game. Cummings, four time, all ASC first team honoree, four time all region as well, a 2021 All American. She really, one of the leaders. We talked about she and Maddox on the left side of that infield, both seniors. Both have garnered All-American honors in their careers. They lead this team defensively and at the plate. And Cummings does it all. There's no doubt that she has power in that bat, but we've also seen her lay down a bunt, and she can get from home to first. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. As deceptive speed does the senior from Space City as watches this paint the bottom of the zone to even the count. ETBU, they are 3-0 here in the championship. They begin with a victory over Rowan on Thursday, 7-0. They faced these same Blazers on Friday, a game that they won 3-2, a back-and-forth affair. And then a victory over Rowan again in an elimination game on Sunday, 5-2, to book their spot here in the final. Good eye from Cummings, 2-1. A bit more of a rocky road, if you will, for Bellhaven as they lost their opener on Friday to these same Tigers. 2-3, to three, but then they rattled off four wins in a row. 5-2 to two over Case Western Reserve on Friday. 3-0 in an elimination game against Tufts on Saturday. Coming to big cut. Runner takes off and is safely in the stolen base. Has White in scoring position. ETBU Tigers is an offense that is on the move all the time. And we've had some rain, so this turf is a little bit slippery, so these runners are going to have to adjust their slide and hang on to the base for dear life. Blazers victories over Linfield in elimination games, 6 to nothing and 4-3 to three on Sunday, booking their spot in their first ever championship. So they're going to call obstruction on Cummings at the plate. It does not appear that they are going to review that, so White out at second, now two away, no one on base. Again, Cummings called with obstruction, the batter, and picks up a big strike too. But just when it looked like the Tigers were in business with their first base runner in a scoring position, now a chance for Carruth and the Blazers to get out of the inning unscathed. And this is what Carruth does best. She does a great job of just handling the momentum and the energy, calming everyone down, locking in and spinning the ball well through the zone. Ruth gets Cummings to strike out her first K of the ball game. The Tigers unable to find anything in the top of the first. We'll see what the Blazers can do coming to bat for the first time after this. Avery Holland gets the start, does the start freshman at lefty out of Fredericksburg, Texas. What a season she has had, a first year collegiate player. All ASC first team has thrown three no hitters, one perfect game. She was the super regional most outstanding player, the regional most outstanding player in all ASC tournament. Through the postseason, ETV pitching has been on point, giving up just 12 earned runs in 11 postseason games. Bellhaven coming to bat for the first time. ATV unable to strike first. We'll see if the Blazers can take an early lead. The center fielder, Maddie Miller, leading things off. The junior out of Brookhaven, Mississippi. And here is how the rest of the order will follow. Gordon, one of the big bats in the two hole. Carruth batting three. 
Jones, four. Keep an eye on Richardson, designated player at five. Parker, Kiami, Widemeyer, and Stock still round out the order. Knipe in right. Oh, and quickly ahead 0-2. And, and this is what you would expect to see. Both of these pitchers, they get ahead early in counts. Absolutely. Holland does a really great job of spinning the ball through the zone. She will challenge these power hitters up and in on the inside half of this plate. But again, likes to work ahead and stay in control. What a year it's been for ETBU. We mentioned they won the 2010 National Championship. Have that sign out on the scoreboard in right field. They would love to add another to it. They have won a program best 46 games, and they have won 23 in a row. They are on a roll here. You mentioned 3 0 in the championship. Coach, you know better than anybody. It's about getting hot at the right time. That's what the Tigers have done. Absolutely. And that's what you want to see as a coach to see your team continue to rise throughout the long season and peak at the right time. Over to second. Picked up by White. The first in time for out number one. Defensively, here's the alignment for ETBU. Holland in the circle. Del Loya is her catcher. Torrance Cummings over at third. Tristan Maddox at short. White has already introduced herself at second. Shelby Navarrete is the first base. In the outfield, Bella Morales at left. Mary Frances Ellis is the center. And right. Now we Gordon to the plate. What a postseason she has had. 17 home runs this season, 65 runs batted in, but she has been on fire here in Marshall. And again, Gordon just seeing the ball really well at the right time, but she does a great job of being disciplined. Cummings for out number two, and that is a big out for the Tigers. The first time they face Gordon. Holland does a great job of spinning the ball well, but she's a pitcher that's going to pitch more to contact and have her defense have her back. And you can see that that's exactly what they're planning to do. It's going to be a game of, of inches, and they're going to have to make sure that they get those outs when they can. Her opposite number, Caruth, caught on the changeup. Caruth at the plate. We mentioned what a stellar job she's done in the circle, but she's been impressive at the plate. A 329 average, 20 doubles, and 36 RBI for the graduate student. Quickly behind Holland, up in the count, 0-2. And, and I like that Holland is challenging Caruth on the inside half of the plate. Caruth has a little bit more of an unorthodox stance, have him more closed off, which makes her susceptible to that inside pitch. Holland recognizes that and going right at her. Caruth slowly over to Cummings at third. No trouble, 5-3 as the Blazers go in order. Scoreless through one, game one. Back, beautiful Bell Park at Taylor Field here on the campus of East Texas Baptist University in Marshall. Obviously, they have quite the crowd here supporting the Tigers, but quite the crowd in green and gold as well as Bellhaven located in Jackson, Mississippi, just about three hours away. These two teams faced off on Friday. It was standing room only. And we are anticipating more as the fans continue to pour in here. These two teams, they know each other. I'm not going to go so far as to say they like each other, former <laughs> conference foes in the American Southwest Conference. But it certainly makes for a great atmosphere with the national title on the line. Four, five, and six do up for the Tigers to face Kennedy Carruth. Had no trouble the first time facing them. White, the only base runner, able to get aboard via a walk, but ultimately called out for leaving early. The Tigers couldn't follow it up with anything. Haley Stum, the designated player at the plate. Stum, the freshman out of Cyprus, part of that talented freshman class, the Houston native. Chops that one over to short. Coming in is Stockstill for the first out. That's a great play by Stockstill. With a slow roller up the middle, the slower the ball takes to get to the defender, the more opportunity the runner has. Just a great job getting over to the ball and getting rid of it quickly. 
That brings up another freshman in the form of Emma Bell. Stum, Bell, Morales, and Holland, all freshmen, all seen big time minutes this season in their first collegiate year. Bell at the plate out of Eustace, Texas. On the season, all conference first team, regional all tournament team. Waiting the 0 1. Into left field, a base hit from Bell. They will hold her in first, a one-out single for the freshman. And these freshmen just continue to step up big time and big moments. I love this at bat by Bell, taking the outside pitch, understanding that Caruth likes to work ahead in the count and driving it to the left side of the field, and she is fired up. She understands how important it is to have a base runner. The first hit, either pitcher is given up in the ball game, and it brings the catcher to the plate, Del Loya. She and Whitey. Austin area natives on this team making the trip to East Texas for their collegiate careers. Aloya, three year player here for ETBU, two time all conference, an all American back in 2022. The former Aikens Eagle awaits the 1 0. Just painting the corner. Mentioned the difference in these pitchers. Holland really pitching to contact, letting her defense do the work. Caruth, she's going to go at you. Certainly can mix it up, but has greater velocity and that more of a prototypical power pitcher, if you will. Over to short, double play opportunity. The throw to first, not in time, but they will get the lead runner. Yeah, Caruth has more velocity, more spin. Caruth is so effective because her ball continues to spin through the zone as the hitter is swinging the barrel. So she gets a lot more swings and misses. Holland is that pitcher that's going to pitch straight to the contact point. Both effective. Bella Morales now up to bat. The Tigers left fielder. A Houston native out of Richmond, Texas. Initial offering just missing. Morales, 4.08, been 41 games played as a freshman. Started 18, he's really come on here towards the end of the season. Ruth able to even the count. In second inning. Tigers with the base runner, trying to do something with it as they picked up their first hit off of Carruth. Up and in. The Tigers led by ETBU alum, Janae Shirley, 17th year in charge of her alma mater. She is 8-0 this year in the postseason in the NCAA tournaments, all-time 39-27. They were 9-1 in the postseason when they won that 2010 national championship, trying to do one better as a player, a part of two NCAA tournaments, so she certainly knows what it takes. Again, Loya presenting that opening run at first. Two away, 2-2. Two, two. Catches the corner. Morales down looking. A second strikeout in a row to end the inning. Still scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. Game one. A best of. Youngest Tiger fans here in attendance. We've seen the youngest, the oldest, everywhere in between. I think that counts as a stolen base. <laughs> that is definitely in safely. 
Absolutely. There's no review of that whatsoever. Scoreless here in the bottom of the second. Tigers with the first hit. They've had base runners in both innings and not been able to do anything with it. Blazers went in order their first time up to face Avery Hall. So now it'll be four, five, and six for Bellhaven. Jones, Richardson, and Parker. First baseman Ellie Jones at the plate. Oh, come on. What I love so much about these pitchers is that they continue to reinvent themselves. So every time the hitters come up, they have a different sequence in that and how they attack the hitters. So it makes it hard for them to adjust and get their timing. One and two, the count to the junior righty out of Nesbitt, Mississippi. Still looking for their first hit here in the ball game. Joan just 167 here in the championship. Over deep in the hole, Maddox across. Not in time, Joan just able to beat it out. A big hit to lead off the inning for the Blazers. And that is a big hit. Deep in the 5-6 hole, Maddox, phenomenal defense, stopping that ball from getting to the outfield, coming up just short of getting that out at first. But she makes that look easy, but that is definitely a hard play going deep in the 5-6 hole. And Maddox, as good as they come, the three-time All-American out of Mission Sherryland High School down in South Texas. And now Katie Joe Richardson lays down the bunt as this one will roll foul. And Richardson, we mentioned Gordon in the two hole, Richardson batting in the five. They have been the ones leading at the plate here in the championship for the Blazers. Richardson has no doubt been the light that has started the offense, whether it be a walk or a base hit. And just her selflessness in the box, she is just as excited about a walk than she is a base hit because she understands that momentum is contagious. He's counted for five runs batted in. That is second just behind Gordon, six here in the championship. And you said it, it doesn't matter how she gets aboard. She is able to get on, and she is able to fire up her dugout seemingly every time she's at the plate. Richardson, the junior of Cordova, Alabama, transfer from Coastal Alabama South Community College. Takes the 1-1 one, one into left. That's going to drop in front of Morales. Perfectly placed. Morales is playing deep. And now there are Blazers at first and second. First time today. Richardson does it again with that inside curveball from Holland. Finding a way to get on base. That jammed her just a little bit, but she's strong enough to get her hands out and get that base hit right in front of the left fielder. I said it, Richardson just seems to get aboard every time she's up. Now sets the table for Parker. No outs, two aboard. The second baseman comes to the plate, does the senior from Denham Springs, Louisiana. Showing bunt popped up, and that will be collected by Loya quickly out from behind the plate for the first out. And just good heads up defense. Corners in, recognizing that they're in a bunt situation. Lots of communication. And you can see every out, every pitch is important. And it brings up Kayami, who on the season leads the co leader, I should say, both she and Gordon on the air, batting 398. Kayami, 11 doubles, 36 RBI. Great opportunity to find another here and put her Blazers ahead. Another Louisiana native out of Zachary is the junior. Back in, and you would imagine with these two pitchers in the circle, you're not going to have a lot of chances. But there's a very good one here for Kevin Griffin's team. 14th year in charge there in Jackson. And what a job he's done. We'll tell you more about that. The transition from NAI to NCAA. Led the program to their first NCAA tournament berth, and now he's led them not only to their first championship, but to their first championship final. I speak so much about his leadership, and consistency has been the word that has been prominent here in the postseason, and especially from him as a leader of the program. Miami takes the 0-2 into left center, a base hit. They will hold the runner at third, and there are Blazers across the diamond. They are opening things up here in the second. A chance to find this opening run. It's a great at bat here. Again, love so much of her standing her back leg, recognizing that pitch is a little bit off speed, keeping her hands back, and driving that ball right center to left center. Bases loaded for Weidemeyer, the left fielder. 
Just one out for the junior out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And that's an important pitch coming right at Weidmeyer with the first strike by Holland. A very important pitch and location matters in the situation that you're in. That's a great pitch, low and in, makes it hard for the hitter to get their hands down into the zone. Each of these two teams saw each other back on Friday. That was the opener for Bellhaven. It was back and forth. Bellhaven found the opener in the first. ETB responded to take the lead in the third. Ultimately, they would hold on for a three to two victory. What we saw and that was any indication this is going to be decided by the narrowest of margins. Weidmeyer not chasing that one. Weidmeyer just one hit here in the championship. One hit in 13 at bats. Should come up with one here. Two and two. That's a great pitch by Holland. You can see it catches a little bit too far out on the outside half of that plate. But again, just we've seen great discipline all postseason with these hitters, just having a good understanding of what their zone is. Holland, that one low gets away from Loya. Blazers are going to bring in the opening run, and Bellhaven has struck first. One to nothing. They lead in the bottom of the second. That's the importance of having runners on base and, and hitters having timely hits. And we'll see that all game, base runners taking advantage of any opportunity that they have to get 60 feet. Oh yeah, unable to come up with it. Now two in scoring position for the Blazers. Off the hands into foul territory. Loya oh yeah, unable to locate it before it dropped. Blazers have done exactly what they were hoping to do, striking first. That being said, they scored first in that game we mentioned between these two on Friday. You know that is a big sigh of relief for Kevin Griffin and his staff. Payoff pitch to Weidmeyer. Over to Cummings, a look to third. The throw across did a good job keeping Richardson on the hot corner. She picks up out number two. Cummings has just been solid all postseason, doing a great job of cutting that ball off, making sure that runner stays put at third base to keep her from scoring. Just heads up defense. The bottom of the order up to bat, the shortstop, Sarah Stockstill, a junior out of Picayune, Mississippi. Coach of Holland, the Tigers are able to get out of this conceding a run. That is a big boost with two in scoring position for Bellhaven. Stockstill into left foul. And the Green and Gold fans down the third baseline, they were immediately on their feet, hoping that was going to drop in fair territory for a base hit. And it didn't miss by much. That inside curveball that Holland is challenging these hitters with, she left that one a little bit too far over the white. She's going to have to make that adjustment to keep that, keep that ball on the corner and continue to mix speeds. Stockstill batting 250 here in the five games of the championship. Just missing there was Holland. Stockstill three hits and 12 at bats. It's not recorded in RBI yet. Stockstill able to catch up to the changeup, just couldn't put it fair. And this is a great at bat. Stockstill doing a great job of using that power down the left side of the field, but staying back in that right leg and driving that change up to the right side, it's a great piece of hitting. Allen taking her time between pitches, the talented freshman. Between this impressive freshman class, they lost so much talent a year ago, did the Tigers, but they've reloaded. 
Just missing two and two now to Stockstill. One thing that I would like to see Holland do, she does a great job of working ahead in the count. But I would like to see her challenge these hitters earlier so she doesn't fall even and behind. Stockstill down swinging. Holland picks up the first strikeout of the game for the Tigers. But the Blazers are on the board, one to nothing, Bellhaven, as we head to the third. Nay Shirley leading her alma mater, 17th year in charge. We said at a program best, 46, 46 games won. They have won 23 in a row. As they picked up another ASC regular season championship, a tournament championship in conference as well. How good have they been here at home? 52-2 at Bell Park at Taylor Field. Those two losses, that was last year. They haven't lost here at home this season. Yeah, Shelby Navarrete, the first baseman, leads it off in the eight hole. Ellis will follow and back to the top of the order with Maddox. Navarrete, the first baseman. A freshman out of Odessa High, the former Bronco. Going back to Coach Shirley and just how impressive her stats are. And again, just cultivating that same thing and you can see that expectation and standard transcending through our team. And we mentioned all the talent they lost a year ago, but it's, they just reload, bring it in talent from across the Lone Star State and further afield. Perfect example of Navarrete from the Permian Basin out in West Texas. And she started these last two games because of the injury to the another talented freshman, Ava Rodriguez. Navarrete, there's been no drop off whatsoever. Waits the one, two. Underneath it. High, that'll head over into foul territory. Stock still there, makes the catch for the first out. And back to Coach Shirley, just again, just when you have that culture, it takes care of itself. So it doesn't matter who comes in, that standard is there and the expectation is there. And we've mentioned before, the athletes are starting to lead from within. And when the athletes start to lead from within, you know you have a solid program. And we talk about the success they've had here at home. 24-0 this season at Pell Park at Taylor Field. 52-2 over the last seasons. You know better than anybody, the importance of defending the house, winning the games at your home ballpark. Tigers do that better than anyone. Now it's the center fielder representing the bottom of the order at the plate. Lone Tiger yet to face Carruth as this will trickle foul and heads up play there from Kiami behind the plate. Saw the spin on it, did the Blazers catcher. And that is a heads up play by Camp Kiami, no doubt. She touches that ball, it stays fair and the Tigers are on board and that's exactly what they want here. And when they're on the bases, their offense is so explosive and they have so many options to, to move the runners up 60 feet. Now it's the local product out of Legion Field, just down the road from us here in Marshall, East Texas native. Batting 200 here in the championship. One hit in five at bats thus far. Able to get a piece of it to stay alive. We mentioned these pitchers do a great job of getting ahead. And when you get down early, you have to do exactly what Francis is doing, just foul off pitches until you get something you think you can drive for a base hit. Alice doing her job. Hoping to be aboard with one out when the order rolls over. And Maddox, star shortstop, waiting on deck. That just goes the importance of spin. Spin as a pitcher matters. 
the tighter the spin, the harder it is for the hitter to square up on the ball. Just missing to even the count. Kennedy Carruth, we have gotten to know well here this week. What a season, what a championship. Over 900 career strikeouts. She's thrown 280 this season alone. That is in 238 and a third innings pitched. Misses the count now full to Ellis. Just a one to one ERA for the graduate student. Ellis, great at bat here in the bottom of the order. Ellis doing a great job. When you have two strikes, you want to allow the ball to get a little bit deeper so you can put better eyes on it, stay in that back leg so you can drive it to the opposite side of the field. That's the goal. Ellis down to swinging out number two, third strike out of the ball game for Carruth. Carruth doing what Carruth does. Just a great job of mixing spins and speeds. And the most effective there in that bat, she changes eye levels. She throws it up with that rise ball. She can also bring it down, but ultimately finishing off with the rise ball up and at her hands. Back to the top of the order with two down. The shortstop, Tristan Maddox, back to bat, 0 for 1. Grounded out to short and her first at bat. Maddox into left field. Oh, what a snag made by Weidemeyer. And it's three up, three down for the Tigers, thanks to the star left fielder, Mary Moore Weidemeyer. Still one to nothing. Bottom of the third. Blazers led by 14th year head coach Kevin Griffin. What a job he has done in his tenure there. He helped them through their transition from NAIA to NCAA back in 2015. They were an ASC member alongside these Tigers from 2015 to 2022. Led them to their first NCAA tournament berth in 2021. This their first championship and first final. As Miller there at the top of the order, wastes no time going down quickly for the first out. Coach Griffin, a 69% winning percentage, just shy of 450 wins in his time there in Jackson, Mississippi, assisted by Courtney Fairley and Bailey Winscott. And Allie Gordon to the plate, one away. Gordon grounded out to third in her first at bat. But Gordon said it, co-leader on the team with batting average, 17 home runs, 65 runs batted in, and she has been even better here in the championship, batting 417. Right back through the circle, a line drive single for Gordon. Gordon just continuing to see the ball really well. Great poise in the box, allowing that inside curve ball to come her, get her barrel out and drive it back up the middle with power. That ball got through the infield quick, fast, and in a hurry. You know, Gordon, has she continues to do, a menace at the plate. Mentioned her team leading 471 average in the championship. Three home runs, six runs batted in, 19 total bases, and 17 at bats for Gordon. Now the pitcher Carruth looking to aid her cause. Kennedy grounded out to third to end the first. We talk so much about both of these coaches who have staying power, who have put time in with their programs and with Coach Griffin just having a clear vision on how to transition his team from one level to the next. Just very impressive this leadership. Ruth. 
the 0-2 fouled off. And Coach, you and I have spoken at length about this both on and <laughs> off air. But the transition from NAI to NCAA, I don't know that most people fully understand how difficult that transition is. Not only have they made it, but they've made it with a lot of success in a very short period of time. Absolutely, and just understanding what it takes. And I think that's what's so impressive is that he not only was willing to do the hard thing, but then also lead them. And for them to be here. They throw to second, not in time as Gordon in safely in the scoring position. Karut down swinging. Brings Jones up two away. And coach to the previous point. I mean, think about that. Made the transition back in 2015 made their first NCAA tournament just six years later. That's about as quickly as you can do it. Absolutely, and just understanding what it takes and the athletes that it's gonna, and what it's gonna take from the athletes to get them there and just leading them through that transition and having high expectations and having high standards and building the culture to continue to win and be successful. All the strike is Jones quickly down to the count, 0-2. Bellhaven through the first two innings. They've left two runners on base in danger of leaving a third. Jones stays alive in the at bat. It's a good job from Jones just battling allowing the ball to travel, stay shorter through the zone, thinking more contact here. Jones over to Cummings at third. No trouble for out number three. Another runner left on base. Blazers unable to extend the lead through three. Still one to nothing, Bellhaven with the lead. Top of the fourth, those Tigers trail the Blazers one to nothing. Game one in our best of three championship final. Blazers striking first, a run in the bottom of the second. They've not been able to follow it up. Coach, you and I looking at these two teams, very contrasting styles, contrasting dugouts leading into this championship final game one. Absolutely, with Coach Shirley's team, they're a little bit more together, more focused, more stoic. Um, Bellhaven pregame is a little bit more relaxed, more dancing. But what, what I want to make sure that we understand is that there's more than one way to lead a program. And each coach has their own way, and, and both ways are successful. And there's room for multiple types of leadership. And you have to do what's best for you and your program, and they will follow. White underneath it. Gordon in from third to make the catch for out number one. No, it's a great point, and you, obviously these two teams have a lot of success. The reason they're here, the only two teams remaining in Division Three softball this season, but it was it was a more jovial, kind of light-hearted Bellhaven side. They were out there, and when you saw ETBU, I mean, they were you said it more stoic, really just focused on the task at hand. But teams will follow their coaching staff they'll follow that lead but coaches have to understand you know this as well as anyone that you have different teams different teams have different moods they have different kind of sometimes you'll have a team that's a little more serious They're, that's the way they like to, sometimes you have a team that likes to kid around a little more they like to be a little more hearted you have to you have to adapt your coaching style to that as well absolutely you have to meet them where they are and to that point if etbu tried to be a little bit more lighthearted and vice versa, then that would be outside of who they are. So it's important for coaches to understand the character of their team, the dynamics of their team, and then meet them where they are. And both leadership styles are effective. 
Cummings at the plate. Went down swinging to in the first. Ruth, her first strike out of the three she's recorded thus far. Watches it low, evens the count. Umpiring crew for today, Todd Davis behind the plate, Helen Deglers at first, Andrew Mastin at third. And I once had a friend of mine who's a collegiate coach told me, you have to be authentic as a coach. Players can sniff out inauthenticity. If you're trying to be something you're not, they will know it and it is not going to work. So whoever you are, whatever that is, stick to that. Cummings chase the rise ball and strike two. And you are so right. There's one thing that I heard very early on in my coaching career from a mentor of mine, and, and he said, be whom you are. And I thought that was so profound, and it has helped guide me as a leader. And the more clear I am about who I am as a leader, the more I'm able to lead, lead my teams as well. Do you lead with the fact that you are a Hall of Famer? Because <laughs> that's what I lead with when I'm with you. And, and, I mean, obviously. And, Again, all seriousness, soon to be Mississippi State Hall of Famer. Congratulations again, Coach. Thank you. Cummings watches that high, but I would imagine that having the resume you do, it's got to make things a bit easier because this day and age, players, all they have to do is type in your name. They're going to quickly find out what you've done. That, that gives you some instantaneous cred, as well it should. There's no doubt that, I've, that it gives me credit, but one thing that – I have to understand as a leader and a coach is that kids care more about how I show up every day and how consistent I am and they will never forget how I make them feel. So yes, those accolades are important and it does give me credit instantaneously. However, it's the day to day and the consistency as a leader I think that makes the most effect. Cummings underneath the payoff pitch into right into the glove of Knipe for the second out. So two down, and that'll bring up the designated player, Haley Stum. Stum rounded out to short to lead off the second. A freshman out of Bridgeland. Freshman of the year in the ASC, all-conference first team, all-American third team in her first collegiate year. Coach, you said something that really stuck with me, and I was fortunate to coach who said this very early. People will forget what you say, they'll forget what you do, but they will never forget how you make them feel. I think that's a great point. You just illustrated right there. Still unable to locate it. Ruth coming back with some heat that time and Really the fact that she can mix up her pitches as well as she can. Obviously she has the speed, the velocity, but it's the myriad of pitches, that is what makes her so successful in knowing when to throw which pitch. And that's the key, just having an understanding of what and how to attack each batter. And with the spin that she has and the movement that she has, she's so effective. And the changeup that she can throw at any count on a dime, that makes it so hard for the hitter. One, two, fouled out of play. As the Tigers in danger of going in order for the second consecutive inning. Very more Widemeyer, the left fielder, made a stunning catch in left field to end the third, just when it looked like the Tigers were gonna be able to get something going. Widemeyer had other ideas. Tiger fans, hoping some can keep things alive. And fouled out of play. And I mentioned your impressive resume as a player, but as we all know, anyone who's watched sports, being a good player does not automatically make you a good coach. People know this for a fact. There are a lot of great players who have not had successful coaching careers, and that, that is, that's a difficult transition to make no matter how successful a player you are. Absolutely, it is hard, and I would say in my earlier career, I was not very good at that transition. <laughs> I have learned quite a bit. Over to third, that gets underneath the glove of Gordon, a two-out single for Stum. Just a great at-bat for Stum with two strikes, with Caruth and the way that she spins the ball through the zone. 
just staying in there again. Two strike approach. You want to let the ball get deep, and that's exactly what she did. Found a way to get her barrel out and hit the ball down the left side of the field with some velocity. Freshman right fielder Emma Bell to the plate now with two away, runner aboard. She singled the left her first time up. Coach, it is hard to believe we are in the top of the fourth and we have not yet mentioned the two-out magic that has proliferated <laughs> almost every game we have seen in the championship this week. Tigers hoping for a little of that two-out magic right now. Bell into left, Weidmeyer comes in, and the Tigers leave some stranded at first. Still one to nothing, Blazers on top by the narrowest. Welcome back, beautiful Bell Park at Taylor Field here on the stunning campus of East Texas Baptist University in Marshall, and it really is. It is manicured down to a blade of grass. We have had phenomenal hosts this week. Cannot thank them enough. They have gotten us through weather of every sort, seemingly. We've had rain delays, two tornado warnings in the vicinity, but they have kept us safe, they've kept us fed. And we cannot thank them enough for their hospitality here in East Texas. Hope you've enjoyed the week as well as we now start to wrap things up. One game tomorrow, one, possibly two tomorrow. Here in our championship final, a best of three game series. Our first base umpire, Ellen Degler there, a word with Janae Shirley, Tigers head coach. She's assisted by Bill Galloway, Guy Shirley, Jeanette Galvin, and Hannah Garcia on the staff here in Marshall. The Richardson leading things off, five, six, and seven, two up for the Blazers, trying to extend this one run lead. Richardson one for one, singled back in the second. Ultimately, you know, that first run and only run able to come in during that inning, but it was a great start. I mean, Richardson singled Parker there, Jones all contributing. Now we'll see what Richardson can do here to lead off the inning. Richardson is the fire starter for this offense, and she is just doing a phenomenal job here late in the season of having good at bats, and that's the most important thing, is just having good at bats and letting the outcome be what it is. You can't control the outcome, but she comes in, she has a good plan, she understands what she's going to attack, and she's willing to let the balls go. That's not in her plan. Holland giving up four hits, one run. Struck out two, has not walked a Blazer thus far through the first three innings of work. The Blazers with those four hits, they've left three on base, including two in scoring position, so they've had opportunities to extend this lead. This one's shaping up very much the way we thought it would, a pitcher's duel between Holland and Carruth. The freshman lefty comes with the 2-2. Outside, good eye from Richardson. One thing we've seen from her, she's very patient at the plate. Obviously can swing the bat, has power. Seen her lay down bunts as well. She's a tough out because she really can do it all at the plate. She really can, and she's seeing the ball really well. To your point. Draws the leadoff walk, does Richardson. And that's just another great at bat. She's seeing the ball really well, just understanding where her zone is and what the umpire is calling, and just being cognizant of what those pitches are 
and understanding that that does not change regardless of the count. So again, just happy to take a walk and understand how important each at bat is. Well, we will have a pinch runner for Richardson as that is Jordan Knipe, the right fielder who comes Ooh. on, the junior out of Knoxville, Tennessee. And Natalie Parker comes to the plate. Parker tried to lay down a bunt to advance Richardson in her first at bat, ultimately popped it up, and Loya able to make the grab behind the plate. That one gets away, and easily on to second goes Knight. Holland coming in with that rise ball. Bunt situations, you have an upspin, you want to challenge the challenge the hitters up and in to try to get them to pop that up. And you can see it got a little bit too far away from the catcher there with that late break. Well, Blazers, another runner in scoring position, trying to extend this one to nothing lead. Bunt laid down, Cummings in from third, nicely done. But a well-executed sacrifice bunt as Parker has moved Knight just 60 feet away for making it a two to nothing game. Let's just talk about Common. She is all over the field. I absolutely love how aggressive she is. She was right there on the bunt, took it away from my side. You and I've said it, the senior third baseman from Houston, she can do it all, deceptive speed, a great hitter. But that left side of the infield between Cummings and Maddox, as good a left side of the infield as you're going to see anywhere at any level. And just understanding each other and trusting each other. So Maddox has an understanding of where Cummins is, proximity on the field, and just that unspoken communication just makes the defense flow so much better. So Kiami, the junior catcher at the plate, one for one. Having single to left, her first time up. We'll see what Coach Griffin elects to do here. With Knipe 60 feet away, we know runs are gonna be at a premium. What will they do to try to get Knipe across the plate? Just one out. Something to note for these pitchers as they face these hitters multiple times through the lineup is that they have to continue to expand and be flexible with the sequence that they throw them. So in between innings, they go back and look at the charts and and take a look. Did the pitch break the way I wanted it to break? It was at the right sequence at the right time. So they're constantly working and changing. Cummings at third. Try to spin around and apply the tag. What a double play that would have been. But even so, great work on the hot corner for Cummings. She fires me up and she is up in front of the line. Just read and react first reaction, first step. Just a great defender. Torn Cummins, her senior year, trying to end things on a high note. The reason she came here to ETBU to win a national championship, has the opportunity to do so. It's won just about everything else you can. All-American in 2021, numerous all-region, all-conference honors. Mary Moore Weidmeyer, the left fielder at the plate, made that great catch in left. Still looking for her first hit at the plate. Grounded out to, yes, you guessed it, Torrin Cummings at third and her first at bat. <laughs> what I love so much about Cummings is there's two outs. Most of the time defenders are back behind the bag, but not Cummings. She is challenging those hitters up in front of the line and she can handle it. She is very quick down that third base side. Over the head of Cummings, fair ball. The Blazers have found insurance. Weidmeyer with a two out RBI single brings Knipe in and brings Bellhaven up two to nothing. And we continue with that two out magic again, just taking that inside curve ball. Pokes it just right over the glove of Cummings again. Finding a way to do it with two outs. Two out magic continues here 
Bell Park at Taylor Field. We've seen it from game one. Weidemeyer giving the Blazers a bit of breathing room. Stock still now at the plate. 0 for 1 is the shortstop for Bellhaven. Struck out swinging in her first at bat. It's busy as Kennedy Carruth has been. Every pitch in the last 11 games, Bellhaven has not thrown a pitcher since exactly one month ago today. The day off yesterday, that is exactly what she needed. The two games on Sunday, both elimination games against Linfield. In that second game against the Wildcats, you could tell she was starting to tire, but got the run support. Blazer was able to hold on for the 4-3 to three lead. Now with a fresh Kennedy Carruth. And the two-run lead, Blazers putting themselves in a good spot early. Yeah, it's very common for pitchers to throw one game after the other, but you could start to see the heat play a factor with Carruth. But what I love so much about it is her team picked her up and they found a way to help her in those moments. And that's what that's what teams do. That's what great teams do. They find a way to do it together. Sox still takes it inside to even the count. You said it. This is a team sport. It is not an individual sport. Obviously, pitcher a little different. Not so much focus on the circle, but I think her Blazer teammates, she's carried them so often this season, they were happy to reverse roles a bit there in that victory. Cummings at third across. She got it. Sitting down across the diamond, 5-3 to end the inning. Torn Cummings, take a bow. But Bellhaven able to find insurance. They now lead 2 to nothing as we head to the fifth. Blazers was able to find insurance in the bottom of the fourth, but it was Torn Cummins on the hot corner. What a play to end the inning. Cummins does a great job of staying with that and finishing the play. She's not waiting to see a call from the umpire, but just fielding the ball, completing the play, and again, just wanting to keep the momentum on their side. I think Stockstill thought that was going to get through. You could tell by the way she was coming out of the box, not a straight line, not trying to beat the run out. And as a result, she was out at first. But the Tiger Bats trying to get something going. Just two hits through the first four innings on Kennedy Carruth. Has not conceded a run. Has walked one, struck out three. For the star righty from Louisiana. Boya, Morales, Navarrete, six, seven, and eight due up for ETBU. Ruth, 57 pitches thrown through the first four innings. But when she is feeling it, she is fresh. There are a few better pitchers anywhere than Kennedy Carruth. Popped up. Out of play over in the ETBU fan section down the first baseline. Now you and I are commenting the both these teams. Obviously great support, ETBU here at home. and. Bellhaven is three hours away in Jackson, Mississippi, but they have brought a lot of fans. And you and I, we are in agreement. The best fans are the young fans. You see the next generation <laughs> out here, how happy, how excited they are to be at the ballpark. Just does your heart good. Underneath it, this will stay in the infield. Gordon, no trouble for the first out. Absolutely, the young fans looking on. 
what they're doing here on the main stage matters and they dream about moments just like this and they're watching everything how they handle hard times how they handle when they come up short and i think that's the biggest thing that we don't talk about enough is that this is a sport of failure and these athletes have to figure out a way to move on to the next play immediately after and with softball it's so challenging because you don't always get the next play back to you to fix whatever happened the play before so these athletes are having to dig deeper and dig in their toolbox to figure out how to breathe through those moments Morales fouls it off does the Tigers left fielder struck out looking to end the second and to your point coach there are not a lot of sports where if you're doing 33 percent if you're if you're batting I mean you think about that you're batting 333 that's a great average most sports if you're you're going one for three it's uh one for four it's it's not nearly where you want to be but you're right you deal with so much failure in this sport and to see these athletes the way they interact with these young fans I've seen them out there taking pictures signing autographs it speaks volumes to their institutions to their schools to their parents I mean they are great ambassadors of this sport and of division three softball Two one into left, that'll drop. Weidmeyer unable to get to it in time. Morales aboard of the one out single. And that's a great job by Morales. This is exactly what these Tigers are gonna have to do with Caruth, who spins the ball so well. They're gonna have to stay short through the zone. Caruth likes to throw up and in at their hands and they're getting underneath with that spin. They're gonna have to be stronger to contact, shorter to contact, and find a way to, to get the ball down. Shelby Navarrete, the first baseman, digs in. One away, one aboard. Fouled out to the third baseman in her first at bat. Now a base runner, Navarrete representing that tying run at the plate. ETBU. That's just their third hit by Morales. And she takes off to second. Unable to hold it. Stockstill came across from short. It was going to be a difficult play to make, even if she had it cleanly. This is a great job, and this is exactly what these Tigers do once they get on bases. They are not stand still. They're going to find a way to stay in motion. And again, any opportunity they have to move 60 feet, they're going to take it. They will definitely swipe a base given any opportunity. That is one of the trademarks of Janae Shirley softball here for ETBU. Now that opening run for the Tigers 120 feet away. I want to go back to my point earlier, just talking about the hard times. There's going to be times as hitters where you see the ball really well and times where you don't. And what you have to remember is you have to stay at it and stay present in the moment. As Navarrete hit by the pitch, now the tie and run aboard for ETBU. Ruth coming up and in at her hands with that rise ball that she throws so well with so much command. But it got a little bit too far away from the plate. And again, you can see these Tigers are celebrating any opportunity they have to get runners on base. They have two aboard. They've left two stranded in the ball game, but again, just three hits off of Kennedy Carew thus far as we will have a pinch runner for Navarrete at first. Mallory Pyle, the pinch runner, is the sophomore from Hallsville, a local product. Just down the road from us here in Marshall. Representing that tying run is number 20 for the Tigers at first. Mary Francis Ellis, the center fielder, comes to the plate at the bottom of the order. 0 for 1, struck out swinging first time. She faced Carruth, part of that 1-2-3 third inning. Lays the bunt down, Gordon from third. Gets the throw in time, but now the tying run. 120 feet away for the Tigers. That is softball one-on-one, -on -one, just getting the butt down and moving the runners. And as we've talked about before, here we go again, Kit, two outs. 
The two out magic, you can set your clock to it. We kid, but quite literally, that has been the story <laughs> this week. If there has been one constant through all of the games, it's not the weather, it's none of those things that we can, it's, it's the two outs. Seemingly in every single game, that has been the game changing moment been two outs very rarely has it been with no or one outs for whatever reason two outs pops up on the scoreboard <laughs> and whoever's on the diamond they lock in I think this is a good time out here I just want to make sure that Karuth understands what sequence she's going to throw make sure the defense is on the same page and just to calm the defense down take a deep breath again just all of those intangibles Plays such a big factor in moments such as these. Karuthi, four time conference pitcher of the year in the CCS. Talk about consistency. She has been dominant. The rest of her conference foes will be very happy to see her graduate. This is going to go into right field. Goodbye. The All American shortstop, Tristan Maddox, with a three run home run. And ETBU takes their first lead of the game, three to two Tigers in the top of the fifth. Fire me up, Maddox, just doing it on both sides. Solid defense, coming up clutch. This is a great job understanding that Karuf is dominating on the outside half of the plate, just sitting back, driving that ball to the right side of the field. And coming up big, again, big time players come up big in big time moments. South Texas product out of Mission, Texas, and we said it. Three-time All-American Conference Tournament MVP, four-time All-ASC First Team honoree. She has done just about everything. Part of that star left side of the infield of both seniors, she and third baseman, Torn Cummings. They've been so good defensively. And what a bomb there for Maddox. Well, this game is completely changed in just one swing of the bat. Ruth was humming along business as usual for the ace for the Blazers. Now how does she respond? Down for the first time in the ball game. It's similar to what we saw when these two teams met previously back on Friday. Bellhaven went up in that one. ETB was able to battle back and ultimately hang on for a lead. That final score, three to two. We'll see if there's a little deja vu today in Marshall. Game one in this best of three game series. Miller in center, makes the catch to end the inning on White, but not before Maddox has her say. The three run home run from the senior shortstop to put the Tigers ahead. Blazers trying to respond in the bottom of the fifth. Tristan Maddox, the three-run home run, putting the Tigers ahead. They were down. The senior, the All-American, had her say. And now Tigers on top for the first time in the ball game as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Blazers trying to respond. Game one, our best of three-game championship final. Just one game today. Coach, we will play another tomorrow, another two if necessary. The Division three championship coming down to these two former conference foes. ETB won the national title in 2010. This is the first ever trip to the championship for the Blazers. Can they make it one for one? And we'll have to battle back here in game one. Top of the order, Maddie Miller, the center fielder at the plate, and quickly ahead 3-0. and They would love to get the leadoff batter aboard. Get that tying run on with no outs with Bellhaven. Miller 0 for 2, a pair of ground outs, and her two at bats. They'll have to come back. Count now 3 and 1. 
for Holland just to continue to spin the ball through the zone. She's got to pull that ball over just a little bit more. It's tailing a, a little too far away from the plate. She's got to work from behind here. Low ball four. So Miller drawing the leadoff walk, and there's that tying run aboard for the Blazers with no outs. Guess who's coming to bat? Allie Gordon leading this team with six runs batted in, a 471 average here in the championship. And coach will go out to have a quick word with the star freshman out of Fredericksburg. A Texan from the Hill Country, just a bit west of Austin. We mentioned what Gordon has been able to do here at the championship. She just continues to light it up. And I'm not talking about base hits. I'm talking about home runs. And they get out quick, fast, and in a hurry. She just is seeing the ball really well, understanding what pitches she wants to attack. And she swings with no doubts. Gordon, another graduate student out of Macon, Georgia, Tottenham Square Academy product. See what the Peach State product can do here in this one. She's one for two. And they got her to ground out her first at bat. Picked up a single line drive through the circle. Her last time up to face Holland. Holland's got to continue to mix and change the sequence. The challenge for Gordon is that she's seeing the ball so well. And one thing to note as pitchers, you can spin the ball well and, and put it in the right location, and the hitter can still barrel up. They're a good hitter. Gordon through the left side. Neither Cummings nor Maddox are able to make a play on it. So that tying a run in scoring position, and Gordon does what she does best, continues to get a board. Now two for three in the ball game is Allie Gordon. Now stepping up to the plate, number 18, Kennedy, Kennedy. Pitcher for the Blazers up to bat is Carruth. A chance to aid her own cause. 0 for 2, a ground out and a strikeout. Carruth shows bunt. Lays it down. Cummings up the line in time. But Carruth putting two of her teammates in scoring position, doing exactly what she was tasked with. And that is a prime example of doing what the game needs. You see Carruth a hitter in the heart of the lineup who has power, but was tasked with putting down the bunt, and that's exactly what she did, did because that's what the, the game needed. So again, just have to be adaptable and flexible as hitters, and remember it's about the team, what the team needs, more than it is about yourself. Ellie Jones, first baseman for the Blazers, getting a long word from her head coach, Kevin Griffin, before she steps in. Two in the scoring position, just one out for Jones. She's one for two. Singled to short her first time up. Rounded out to third to end the third, her last appearance against Holland. <laughs> and for strike one, and coach, just like the first meeting between these two back on Friday, this game has everything you could hope for. It is just a back and forth tug of war between two heavyweights. Base hit, getting by White, tying a run in. Here comes the go-ahead run, the throw. And they're going to call her safe. Gordon puts the Blazers back on, sliding in safely before Loya is able to apply the tag. Bellhaven has retaken the lead, 4-3. to three. Again, just timely hitting, taking that screwball right back up the middle. Ground ball scores two. Get into contact, not trying to overswing. Stay within yourself. Just finding any way to put Barrel on the ball. Now Richardson at the plate. Bellhaven looking to continue the momentum and extend this lead. They were up by one earlier. They extended that to two with another run in the fourth before the three-run home run by Tristan Maddox in the top of the inning. Blazers have responded quickly to retake the lead. 
And I would just like to point out, that was a great pitch by Holland. Again, for any pitchers out there listening, you can spin the ball well and hit it and pitch it in the right location. But sometimes you just have to tip your hat to the hitter. Good hitters find a way to get barrel on the ball. Richardson fouls it off the hands for strike two. Give Carruth, I mean credit, she made that well-executed sacrifice bunt, put her two teammates in scoring position. Ultimately, Jones was able to bring them both around to score. Everyone in the Bellhaven lineup this inning doing their part. So oftentimes on, in big innings, pitchers come in and the first question is if you missed your spot and sometimes the answer is no coach I didn't miss my spot it's just a good hitter and she found a way to get on and that's good information to know for the coach so you can figure out how to change it up for next time speaking of change up Richardson goes down with the change up as Holland picks up her fourth strikeout and that's a great pitch by Holland, just continuing to bring that change up out at the right time for Richardson, who sees the ball really well and stays back really well. Excuse me, third strike out there for Holland. Second out as Parker comes to the plate, trying to limit the damage, trying to keep it a one-run game. Insurance on first for the Blazers. Parker looking for her first hit. 0 for 1 is the second baseman. Parker laid down a sacrifice bunt back in the fourth and ultimately able to move the runner into scoring position as they found that insurance run. Blazers had that 2 to nothing lead, but only momentarily for Maddox with the three run home run. The change up in. Holland using that to great effect in this inning. And I love that Holland G's in that, just trying to slow the bats down. She knows the hitters are looking to drive something faster. Just keeping that in the, her back pocket and throwing it in count. It's a great adjustment for her. Parker over to Cummings. Across 5-3 for the third out. But Jones with the two-run RBI single puts the Blazers back on top. Four to three, they lead as we head to the sixth. Well, the fans have been treated to a good one. Game one in our best of three game championship final series, a national title on the line. ETB looking for their second ever national championship in Division Three softball. Bellhaven, first year here in the championship, looking for their first ever title. Back and forth, it has been Caruth back in the circle and her team has re-given her that advantage. Courtesy of Ellie Jones, a two RBI single to put the Blazers ahead, four to three. Three, four, and five do up for the Tigers. Cummings, the third baseman, leading things off. We wouldn't expect anything different from two solid teams, just back and forth, finding ways to create momentum, slow down momentum. Pitchers controlling the game in the circle and defense there to back them up. Cummings 0 for 2, struck out swinging to in the first, flight out to right in the fourth. This one appears that it will come down to the wire. We wouldn't expect a whole lot else. These two very well balanced, similar ball clubs. Jaime did the best she could to frame that one, but it'll go 3 and 1. Full count to Cummings. 
Good job by Carruth. With a three and one count, you know the hitter is looking for something to swing at. So you want to make sure that it's something close, but not too close for them to get barrel on it. Three, two, underneath it. Carruth out of the circle. Makes easy work of that for the first out. Carruth does a good job when she falls behind with hitters. She finds a way to get back into the mix. Again, just with so much spin, it's so deceptive to the hitter, seeming as though it's coming in faster than it is, and it continues to move throughout the zone. Tiger says to player Haley Stum at the plate. We've talked a lot about Carruth in the circle. She feels her position very well to boot, so some pitchers a liability. That's not the case with Carruth, and obviously that was an easy catch right there, but we've seen her make some great plays defensively. Yeah, she really has. She understands how to throw to hitters, but also bounces off that mound very well and fills her position. One away, one one count to Stum. Tigers had a lead, if only briefly. Blazers able to respond. Now Tigers looking to do the same. Off the hands, crew there again and. Fortunately, she and Jones didn't collide. Neither called the other off, but Cruz still able to make the catch. One thing I want to note about Carruth is, and Holland, every pitcher has a go-to pitch that they go to when they're behind. It's something that, a pitch that they don't have to think much about. But what makes Carruth so effective is that she has more than one go-to pitch. She can throw the change up in any count. She also has the curveball, and she can come with the screwball. So again, just an extra factor for the hitters to consider when they have two, two strikes. Bell at the plate, Bell one for two, single to left in her first at bat. Light out to left in the fourth, last time she was up to face Carruth. The Tigers in danger of going in order for the first time since the third. To your previous point, a lot of times you know if you get a good count as a hitter, generally what pitch is going to come, they're going to go to that go-to pitch. With Carruth, you don't. Just keeps opposing batters so off balance. And it does. With hitting, hitting is all about timing. And that timing point for hitters can be at different points of the arm circle for the pitcher. The thing with Carruth is that she does so well spinning the ball. Again, the tighter the spin, the faster it looks as though it's coming to the hitter. And she has up and down and change. So she does a really good job of mixing that and making it hard for hitters to, to stay in there and drive it hard. Blazers fans on their feet. They will have to wait another pitch as it moves to a 2-2 count on Bell. Ruth looking to retire the Tiger batters in orders here in the top of the sixth. Gordon giving chase, but that one out of play. Another aspect for pitching for pitchers when pitchers throw east and west or screw and curve, it makes it a little bit more manageable for hitters because they can focus in on one part of the zone. But when pitchers have a north and south, they have a rise ball, they have a drop ball and a change, it makes it harder for the hitters because when you take the hitters' eyes up and down, it makes it really hard for them to get square on the ball. 2-2, two -two, Parker, it's second. And it's three up, three down for the Tigers. Bottom of the six, Blazers on top, trying to extend their one run lead. Tigers with a new catcher. It'll be Brady Glenn behind the plate, the junior out of Bel Air High School in Houston. 
Gwen comes on in place of Del Loya. Bottom of the six, one run Blazers lead here in game one, best of three championship final series. National title on the line, the bottom of the order up for Bellhaven. Catcher Anna Kayemi at the plate. Weidemeyer waiting on deck, stock still to follow as they try to find some insurance for the Tigers come to bat in the top of the seventh, possibly for the final time here in game one. Kaimi over to Cummings, continues to be a rock at third. Cummings just solid there in third base. Anything that's coming down there is going to be quick and reactive. And quickly one away as Mary Moore Widemeyer, the left fielder, steps to the plate. Widemeyer one for two with an RBI. Widemeyer right back at Holland, able to knock it down, trying to get the throw in time and does. Holland did a very good job able to locate that ball just in the nick of time. That got, ball got back to Holland quick, fast, and in a hurry. But the most important thing for Holland is that she took her time. A lot of times players will panic, and that's when the overthrow comes. But just taking her time, fielding the ball, and making a good throw. The Tigers win in order in the top of the inning. They don't look to return the favor to the Blazers here in the bottom of the sixth. As we will see a pinch hitter in place of Stockstill with two away at the bottom of the order. Colby Hollinger, the junior out of Uriah, Alabama, by way of Coastal Alabama South Community College, comes on. And Hollinger has done a great job pinch hitting here in the championship and getting aboard. Maybe no one sees the ball as well as Hollinger. Picked up some big walks and really buoyed her team, doing her job when she's been up. And that's credit to our team and her as a hitter. Just understanding what the trends are for Holland, so she has an understanding of what she's looking for when she gets in the box. And her teammates talking to her about Holland's go-to and the sequence that she throws. So she maybe not has seen Holland the most, but she definitely has an understanding of what she's looking for when she gets in the box. And Hollinger, this has been the case pretty much every time she's been to the plate, ahead in the count. 3-0. Hollinger looking to draw a two out walk and if she does, keep an eye on that Blazers dugout. Hollinger taking the whole way there as it goes to three and one. And that's a good take there on a 3-0 count. There's some hitters that have the green light but with Holland having a hard time in the strike zone, that's a good take for her. Hollinger underneath it. Maddox as the Blazers go in order to the seventh we go. Just a one-run ball game. Bellhaven leaving ETBU four to three, game one, in our best of three championship final. Tigers fans hoping for the rally here, game one. All of Harrison County in East Texas supporting these Tigers. Best of three game championship final here. At East Texas Baptist University. They won a national championship, the first one in 2010, looking for a second here. But it is Bellhaven, aside from Jackson, Mississippi, their first ever NCAA championship looking to bring a title back with them three hours east. And they are just three outs away from taking this first game. And how big that would be. Game two, and if necessary, game three tomorrow. Game two slated for 11 a.m. here. Beautiful Bell Park at Taylor Field. Game three, if necessary. 
That would be a 1.30 p.m. Central Time start. Loya at the plate. 0 for 1 as Loya sends this into left center. And back against the wall, Miller with a huge catch for the first out. Oh my gosh, we have been saying it all postseason, just how awesome it is for the Audis out there making web jams. And that is not an easy catch to make as she's tracking that ball down all the way into the fence. And she is fired up as she should be. That's a huge first out. Junior out of Brookhaven, Mississippi. A great catch in center for out number one. And now the Tigers down to their final two outs. That's Kennedy Carruth. The Blazers look to take game one. We mentioned this, the 26th all-time meeting between these two former conference foes. Well, Haven, they left the ASC in 2023 for the Collegiate Conference of the South. They have won seven of the last ten meetings. And they had won four in a row until that Friday night victory by ETBU, and they got by their former conference foe three to two. Ruth. Up 0-2, looking for her fourth strikeout. Morales at the plate, Navarrete waiting on deck, trying to keep the game afloat. A chance at taking this first game for the Tigers. Morales, one for two. Single to left in the fifth, her last time up. Over to short, stock still. And the Tigers are down to their final out. Defense matters, positioning matters. You can see the defense shift on the left side of the field for Morales, and that's exactly why it's important to be at the right spot at the right time. It's a big second out. Blazers fans making the trip over from Mississippi. They have been here this week, and they have brought a crew today, as you would imagine. They just need one more out to take this first game and to put themselves in pole position for their first ever softball national championship. Navarrete. Up 2-0. We've said it before, but the quick ascent that Kevin Griffin has led this team on, their first ever NCAA Women's World Series appearance here in Division Three. Made the transition from NAIA to NCAA. Had their first NCAA tournament appearance back in 2021. Just three years later, looking for their first title. It is so impressive what he has done at the helm of this program and what he has built. Tigers down to their final strike. Ruth. Now over 100 pitches. Has done what they've asked her to do. Could she pick up this final out? Bought off by Navarrete. That's a great job following that curveball. Off, tailing off on the outside half of the plate. Two strikes again. You want to let the ball travel. You want to see it deep. Stay short to contact and find any way to get Barrow to the ball. Two outs. 2-2. Two -two. Navarrete again able to stay alive. talk so much about the, the two out magic and we got tools, twos all across the board so these Tigers are looking for some magic here. On the shoulders of Navarrete. Freshman first baseman able to fight it off doing everything she can to keep her Tigers in the ball game and give them a chance. A 
Hands hanging on every pitch here at Bell Park at Taylor Field. Over to third, Gordon. Across. And Bellhaven takes game one, four to three. And the Blazers now one game away from their first ever softball national championship. Tomorrow, we will have game two. And if the Tigers are able to come back, a game three between these two, a national title on the line. Join us 11 a.m. Central Time right here tomorrow. And Bell Haven able to pick up the victory over their former conference foe in their first ever championship appearance. They put themselves one game away from their first ever Division III softball national championship. We will see you tomorrow. Game two and if necessary, game three here in Marshall on NCAA.com.